Hello Rutbags, it's Jay Plays Games. Welcome to a special little mini access show. Today, taking a look at Stranded Deep on Xbox One and the PS4. Go back a good few months now before the collapse of Telltale Games and Stranded Deep was going to be the newest survival game to launch on Xbox One and PS4. Consoles really just don't have that much choice of these type of games. Apart from Ark and Conan, the fair few in between have had mixed results. Daisy is in still early access on Xbox and not available on PS4 and is still very much a work in progress. Whereas The Forest excelled on the PS4 after some updates has really come on leaps and bounds and is one of the best survival games I suggest you play. But that is also an exclusive to the PS4 for a considerable amount of time. Subnautica also launched on PS4 but that still had a bunch of issues as well. So, survival games. Stranded Deep, very similar to a lot of them games I just mentioned, has been around in development on PC for a long time. I've done a few videos charting everything that went wrong with the release. They had a trailer go up, they had dates and they had earmarks or page marks on the PlayStation 4 or the PS Network as well as the Xbox Live store page. Everything was set to go and then this happened. Telltale Games basically went bankrupt. They couldn't afford to pay whatever bills or whatever debtors they owed. They'd overextended with their particular brand of point and click style adventure games. However, they were also behind a publishing arm, which published games like Seven Days to Die on console, as well as a few other offerings. Telltale Games were in charge of Stranded Deep. Stranded Deep, of course, if you don't know, is a game based on where you have been lost at sea and you have to survive on a series of islands procedurally generated with lots of different crafting elements and wildlife to fight off, as well as the usual keeping yourself hydrated, fed and out of danger from the weather and any other sort of dangerous things like sharks. So we still have real no word about exactly how it's gone with the debtors, but basically Telltale went into receivership, which meant that its assets were put up for sale and most likely put into some sort of auction. Now the Telltale's Walking Dead series obviously was still half baked, it hadn't actually came out, it was only on like the second episode. That actually got bought up by Skybound Games, one of the production companies that is overall in charge of the Walking Dead licenses i.e. the creator of The Walking Dead, his own TV production company or his own gaming production company, basically multimedia, picked up the rights for the rest of The Walking series. But that left unanswered questions about Stranded Deep and Seven Days to Die. Now, I've done multiple videos talking about Seven Days to Die and the issues that was facing anyway, so this isn't about that, this is about Stranded Deep. Stranded Deep, alongside many other properties from Telltale, has probably gone under the auction and then means another publisher has picked up the rights. If it's not the case, it, the rights have reverted back to the actual original game creators, who are Beam Team Games. Now they're very small, I guess it's taken a while. They have tried to keep us updated, but the last real bit of information we had was way before Christmas. Since then, it's been pretty radio silent. They released a big update just before Christmas as well. And as you can see, they've got another update right now, just gone live a couple days ago. But here is the new bit of information that I'm really pleased and happy to see. Devs are still committed to releasing Stranded Deep on console. Hopefully we have some good news soon and can get things moving again. Cheers. Now while it's tiny and it doesn't offer any concrete, I'd say, suggestions that the game is definitely coming, I do believe Stranded Deep is going to be in a much better position than Seven Days to Die on console and various other properties that Telltale had. Seven Days to Die basically needs an update for console. It hasn't had one in about a year and a bit, a year and a half maybe. And it's severely lacking behind PC now, which is at least two major updates ahead. But Stranded Deep was much more a clear-cut answer for me because the game was ready to go. It was ready to go live on Xbox and PS4 as a fully-fledged game. Now, it is still in early access on PC, but they were going to sell it as a completed project just like they did with Seven Days to Die on console. Now, that ended up being mixed results and I've gone at length to talk to you guys about how maybe it's not a good idea that we didn't get the Stranded Deep so early because of the problem Seven Days had in its first little year or so of being on Xbox and PS4. But this is good news. I'm taking this to mean that we are going to get an answer soon and hopefully we'll get the news we want that there is going to be a release date for Stranded Deep. 
I can't wait to get my hands on this game. I really enjoyed the forest, love Subnautica, but it's time to have another type of one of these games on the Xbox and PS4. So I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest they have found someone that is maybe just a case of crossing the I's and dotting the T's before we see it finally release with a brand new publishing partner. So that is it. That is all there is to it. I really hope that's going to be the case. I want to keep you guys up to date. I've been doing the videos on these. Obviously not every week because there's nothing really to report. But anytime there's any new information about Stranded Deep, I will let you guys know exactly what's going on. As well as continue updates for The Forest and Subnautica. So if you want the best of survival news, open world games, as well as independent games, make sure you've got that notification bell ticked on and keep up to date when I get some more information I'll share with you as soon as possible. I am Jay Plays Games. I will see you rat bags later.